It is a country that has been very isolated, Veronica, and therefore it is critical that we try to look at the economic reform agenda from the perspective of some of the poorest people, in other words, from the uh, bottom half. And that means uh, very much uh, looking at it from the perspective of the rural economy. Mm -hmm. So we, I've been helping uh, the, the country uh, in terms of the economic reform of its uh, agricultural sector, of its rural economy, and increasingly uh, when it comes to focusing on that in terms of the farmers in the, in the rice sector. Myanmar counts as one of the least developed countries in the world. How do you see the prospects then in the midst of this period of transition? Well, uh, one uh, that is extremely uh, critical is that we cannot leave the country isolated and we cannot wait uh, f uh, to bring about economic change and a more inclus inclusive uh, development agenda uh, without uh, taking into account the changes that are taking place at the highest political level. There are some people who don't believe in the credibility of the elections. What would you say about that? Well, the thing is that it is a first step. And, and uh, obviously, uh, we cannot wait uh, uh, to have the economic reform um, playing a second role uh, to the political agenda. And, and we need to take into account the freedom from want as much as the freedom from fear, and therefore to bring that simultaneously onto the work that we all do. What response have you had to the economic work that you've been doing there? Actually, uh, very positive, uh, uh, very, uh, very positive, because in a sense it is opening up a new space. It is opening up a new space that talks about inclusive uh, development growth and, uh, uh, and one that is more is socially inclusive as well. And therefore, uh, in a sense, what, what it does is that it takes into account the needs of the marginalized groups. It puts onto the agenda that of the, of the farmers. And here, uh, this has been critical because it's an issue of accountability at the, at the end of the day. How do you make use of your development resources, of your economic resources for your people? And if you look at the country, it is a least developed country because it has not invested in human development, has not really uh, uh, invested in human capital. And if you look at uh, what happened at a summit that I recently organized in December with Professor Siglitz um, uh, together with the, the Myanmar government and, and other players in the country. This is the Nobel Prize winner. Prize winner, winner exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly, Veronica. And one of the things that came up was the fact that because of the underinvestment uh, in human capital, this is one of the few countries where the older people are more educated than the younger people. So you have a higher percentage of PhD holders who are 50 and above compared to the younger generation. And increasingly in today's world, if you want to, to catch up uh, economically and, and socially, you need to invest in the knowledge economy, even if you are agriculturally based, because you have to shift from uh, one, uh, for, or if you like, from the first uh, uh, agricultural revolution to the second that is more sustainable, and mm. therefore it's more knowledge-based, more uh, based on your technologies. And here you need people who, who, are, who are exposed to the outer world. And I think that uh, there is that uh, awareness mm -hmm. that uh, isolation has a high, very high cost, especially for the people.